Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today we're going to do Chapter 8, Lesson 2, which is about graphing the function ax squared plus c. Please have your journals open to page 252. A zero of a function is the x-intercept when the function is equal to zero. Another way to say this is when the graph crosses the x-axis. So if you'll remember back when we talked about translations of functions, if you add a number or subtract a number off of the end of the function, what it means is that it's going to be a vertical shift up or down by that number. And that's pretty much what this part says right here. If that number that you're adding on is greater than zero, so it's going to be a positive number, you're going to translate it up that graph. So here is uh, just plain old x squared. But if you have greater than zero, it's going to be shifted up. And then if you have a negative number, so if you're subtracting a number off, you're going to be shifting it down that amount. On the next page, we need to graph the function. And then once again, we're going to be comparing it to the graph of the parent functions, which is x squared. Let's take a look at number one. So let's go ahead and plug some numbers into this function. I'm going to use the ones that we've done before, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So if we plug in negative 3, it'll be negative 3 squared, which is negative 3 times negative 3, so that's positive 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. Now let's plug in negative 2. We have negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4, plus 5, which is 9. Negative 1 times negative 1 is 1, and then we need to add 5, so that gives us 6. 0 plus 5 is 5, and you'll notice what happens here is we end up um, repeating what happened before. Okay, so then this would be 4 plus 5, which is 9, and 9 plus 5, which is back up to 14. So once again, these are repeating, right? We have a mirroring situation that's happening here, and we would expect that to happen because, remember, our axis of symmetry tells us that we're going to be repeat going back up again. So uh, all of our numbers are positive, so that means we're going to be having our x-axis at the bottom, and our y-axis I'm going to go ahead and put in the middle. So if I just keep it counting by ones, I don't have room for my negative 314 or my positive 314, so I'm not going to bother graphing those. So I'm going to go ahead and graph the rest of them, though. So we have negative 2, 9, which is right here. And notice that it's going to be mirrored on the other side. And then we have negative 1, 6, which is here. Again, it's going to be mirrored on the other side. And 0, 5. Okay, so notice that this is my graph that is my x squared plus 5. So if we think about the graph of just plain old uh, f of x equals x squared, so I'm going to graph that, so just to remind you about that. So we start at the origin because 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, so 1 comma 1 would be my next point, and then 2 squared is 4, so 2 comma 4 and negative 2 comma 4, and then I could go continue because we do have the room for 3 squared, which is 9. And so notice that this graph here is my plain old just x squared. That's my parent function. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on between these two graphs. So if you look at our origin, which is 0, 0, uh, if, I, if I count up, how many units is this up? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units up will give us our new function. Now let's take a look at this point here, 1, 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 brings us up to 1, 6, and the same will happen on this side. And uh, 2, 4 is here, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 brings us up to our new function. So you'll notice that this red function here is a vertical shift. It's shifting up 5 units from the parent function of x squared. And so that's what we're going to be writing up here. We're going to say that this is a vertical shift of five units up. All right, I've helped you to get started on number two. I'd suggest plugging in some points. And here's where you're going to want to put your x-axis this time. 
So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can finish this number two on your own. All right, so here's what you should have graphed. You'll notice that once again, we have a mirroring effect. So this output is six and this output is six. This output is one and this output is one. Negative two, negative two. That means this is where our vertex is. And you'll notice that it, it took the original function of x squared and it shifted it down one, two, three units this time. And that's what we would expect because we have a minus three here. So it's a vertical shift three units down. All right, let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens when we plug it into negative 3x squared minus 2. So we're going to plug in a negative 3. So we're going to have negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 squared, which is positive 9, minus 2. So that gives us negative 29. And it's going to be the same thing when we plug in positive 3. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down there. The next one is negative 3 multiplied by 4 minus 2. So that's negative 12 minus 2, which is negative 14. And it'll be the same when we plug in positive 2. Negative 3 times 1 minus 2 is negative 5. And it'll be the same down here. And then negative 3 times 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. So here we can see that we have our vertex right here. This time all of my numbers are negative in the y, so that means that my um, x-axis needs to go at the top. I'm still going to put my y-axis in the middle. And I'm going to go ahead and count by threes um, because that way I can uh, reach all the way where I want to go uh, when I do my points. All right, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can graph these. Okay, here's what I got when I graphed it. Um, you'll notice that it is upside down, and we would expect that because notice that there is a negative out in front of here. So this negative means that it's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. Notice also that, that it is much narrower than x squared would be because we had to count by numbers other than one here. So that is taken from this three here. So the three means that it is a vertical stretch of three. And lastly, I have the minus two. So the minus two tells me that it is a vertical shift of two units down. Okay, I'm going to have you try number four on your own. I went ahead and showed you where the x-axis would be. Notice I moved it up because everything is going to be shifted down by four units. And you don't need to count by anything specific because your multiple this time is just one half. So go ahead and pause the video and finish this on your own. All right, here's what I have. You'll notice that it is much wider than your parent function of x squared. And the reason for that is because your multiple is a half. Anything between 0 and 1 will make your uh, graph wider and uh, not as narrow as the original graph. So that is written this way, vertical shrink of 1 half. It's also shifting down four units, as we said before, so, so we would write that as a vertical shift down four units. On the next page, they just want us to find the zeros for the function. So what that means is we need to take this function, which is negative x squared plus 1, and equal it to 0. So there are two ways to solve this problem. I'm going to show you two ways. The first way is to factor it like what we've been used to doing. So since there's a negative out front, I'm going to first take that negative out. So this will be x squared minus 1 equals 0. And then I notice that I can factor this x squared minus 1. So that's going to be x times x and 1 times negative 1. So this will be negative 1. And then we have x plus 1 and x minus 1 equals 0. And so remember, the zero product property means that this is equal to zero or this is equal to zero. So we would find that x is equal to, I'm going to write it up here, x is equal to plus or minus one is my answer. Now, something else that you can do with this problem, and it only works if you have a situation that has just the x squared and just the uh, a number there. So in other words, if you have a x squared plus c is equal to zero, 
It does not work if you have the BX in the middle, okay? So I want to make sure that you know that, but this is just a little trick for you if you want to know that. Uh, what we can do is we can just solve for x squared this way by subtracting 1 on both sides, and then we have negative x squared equals negative 1. Now I'm going to divide out that negative 1, so we have x squared equals 1, so now, if you remember, the opposite of a square is to take the square root, all right? Now, when we do that, we get x is equal to the square root of 1 is either plus or minus 1. Because if we plug in a positive 1 into here, positive 1 squared is 1. And if we plug in a negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 is also positive 1. So that's why it ends up being a plus or a minus 1. So either way we get the same answer. This is the way that we're used to doing. But if you want to know the trick, and once again it only works if you don't have that middle term of bx, you can solve it this way instead. So let's take a look at number 6. I'm going to take 0 and equal it to negative 4x squared plus 16. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move this over to the other side instead of doing it, uh, instead of subtracting 16, I'm just going to move the uh, negative 4x. So it's adding 4x to both sides, so it becomes positive when we move it over. And now we're going to divide out the 4, and so we get x squared is equal to 4. And once again, since the opposite of a square is to take the square root, the square root of 4 is 2. So this is going to be plus or minus 2 as an answer. I would like for you to pause the video, please, and try number 7 and number 8 on your own. Okay, pause the video and check your answer. If you got anything incorrect, see if you can find your mistakes. In exercises 9 and 10, they just want us to sketch the parabola with the given characteristics. They're not giving us a lot of information, they're just giving us a few things. So on number 9 it says the parabola is opening down, and so what that means is it's going to be going in this shape, and we're told that the vertex is 0, 5. So we're just going to go ahead and graph that. Um, I'm going to put my x-axis down at the bottom. And um, I'm told that the, my vertex is at 0, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be here. And I'm told that it opens down. I don't know anything else. So I'm just going to draw a graph that opens down and has that vertex. That's all I know about it. And that is as good as it can get there. All right, let's take a look at number 10. It says that the lowest point on the parabola is 0, 4. So if that's the lowest point, that's going to be opening up this time. And so I'm going to go ahead and once again put my, um, put my x-axis down there at the bottom. And I'm going to count up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And this time we are graphing it up because that's the lowest point. So it has to be going up. Okay, that's it. Thanks so much for watching.